نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على سيدنا ومولانا محمد رسوله النبي الكريم أما بعد فعوز بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من والده وولده والناس أجمعين Dear viewers, I greet you with the Islamic greeting of peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, in this episode of Friends of Allah, we will be discussing the life and the teachings of Hazrat Shaykh Fuzail ibn Ayyaz, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. This great saint, great friend of Almighty Allah, upon whom, whose hands millions of people in the city of Mecca had not only strengthen their relationship with Almighty Allah, but also were introduced to spiritual excellence. They were introduced to tasawwuf through the hands of Hazrat Fuzail ibn Ayyaz. Hazrat Fuzail ibn Ayyaz rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi was born in the city of Samarqand. And he was a wali on the method of kasab, which means that he did, was not born as a wali, as a friend of Allah. In fact, it was during his life, his repentance, his effort to return to the court of Almighty Allah, repent to Almighty Allah and ask forgiveness. And then his struggle that led towards Vilaya, that successfully gave him the friendship of Almighty Allah. And he became such a person that the great Imams of their time used to sit in the company of Fuzail ibn Ayyaz rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi. Hazrat Fuzail ibn Ayyaz rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi, prior to doing tawbah, he, prior to his reformation, prior to his renunciation, he used to be the chief of a band that used to be highway robbers. Hazrat Fuzail ibn Ayas, for many years, was the head of a gang that used to loot caravans, used to loot people that were travelers, musafirin. And Hazrat Fuzail ibn Ayas, rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi, at that time, did not yet do his tawbah. According to some narrations, he totally disobeyed Almighty Allah. And according to some narrations, he did pray. He did worship Almighty Allah. He did fulfill the commandments of Almighty Allah. But at the same time, he used to also do, commit haram, commit sins. He used to rob also at the same time. So there are two narrations in regards to his life. But the tawbah, the true repentance that came into his life and changed his life was that particular moment that he, his, his followers, they were looting a caravan and Fuzail ibn Ayaz was among them also looting, busy in looting. One person, a child was reciting Quran and he recited this following verse. Is the time not yet there? Has the time not arrived? that the hearts of the believers are filled with the love and the fear of Almighty Allah. This verse and the recitation of the tilawa of this verse had such an impact on the state of Fuzail ibn Ayyaz while he was busy engaged in committing haram, in looting. It had such an impact on him that he left everything there and he returned into the jungles. Fuzail ibn Ayyaz state changed while he recited and while he listened to the verse of the Qur'an. Now suddenly, he wanted to ask Allah for forgiveness. He wanted to repent to Almighty Allah. And he wanted to detach himself from the dunya. This Fuzail ibn Ayyaz then spent the next following weeks into returning all the wealth that he has collected by looting caravans. And those whose belongings he had already spent and he was unable to return. He spent the next few years asking forgiveness to all these people. And before I continue here, dear viewers, those that say that Fuzail ibn Ayaz used to pray, used to fast, it is perfectly believable that he did so. Because Fuzail ibn Ayaz was given that tawfiq of repentance, tawfiq of, of forgiveness, tawfiq of tawbah. That tawfiq Allah Almighty gives to those people that somehow are kind-hearted. Somehow they are soft-hearted. And Fuzail ibn Ayaz also is known to be that during his life as a chief of a band, 
that were criminals during his life as a criminal, he specially did not, his attitude and behavior towards women and children was, was kind. Despite the fact that he used to loot, he did not hurt and harm anyone physically. And he used to specially instruct his followers, instruct his members of his gang, not to harm anyone during and just take the wealth, but not physically harm anyone. This narrative that he was a person who used to be kind-hearted one way, this is to be accepted because Allah Almighty does not guide that person who is stone-hearted. That person who is himself evil. That person is not guided by Almighty Allah. For a person to be guided, for a person to give, get guidance in Hidayah, Allah chooses those people that are somehow positive, have some positive quality in the character and personality. And Hazrat Fuzail ibn Ayyaz rahmatullahi ta'ala did have this. Hazrat Fuzail ibn Ayyaz, the viewers, when he asked people for forgiveness, there was a particular person who he had, whom he had looted. And this person was a Jew. He refused to forgive him. This Jew for, refused to forgive him. And he said, the only way I will forgive you is, look at this huge pile of dirt in front of my house which was many meters high, tall. And he said, Oh Fuzel, unless you move this pile of dirt somewhere else, somewhere that I cannot see it, and it does not cause any distress, any smell to my family and my locality, I will not forgive you, O Fuzel. Hazrat Fuzel ibn Ayaz, who himself used to be the chief of a band, now had abandoned that that. that personality that he had now was not the same Fuzail ibn Ayaz anymore. That proud Fuzail ibn Ayaz now was ready to remove dirt of pile, pile of dirt. He was ready to engage in cleaning. And while he was doing so with ikhlas, with lillahiyyat, with sincerity, just because he wanted to attain the forgiveness of this person, the Jew, because he knew unless this Jew forgives me, that person that I have not treated well, treated kindly, unless he forgives me, Allah Almighty will not forgive me. So he did all his best while he was removing this pile of dirt slowly and slowly. On the third day, for three continuous days, he was busy doing so. On the third day, suddenly a, hur a hurricane came. And the hurricane moved the whole pile of dirt from that place to a place where it cannot be seen at all by the Jew and it was not in the neighborhood of the Jew anymore. It did not cause distress anymore. And the Jew, when, when he saw this, was amazed and surprised that all the pile of dirt suddenly is disappeared from there, has disappeared. And he asked him, O oh, Fudal, how did you manage to do this? And Fudal ibn Ayah said that Allah Almighty helped me. Allah Almighty was kind and he helped me. He brought a hurricane and the hurricane removed the pile of dirt from here. When this Jew heard this, O oh, Fuzel, there is a bag of dirt that is placed into one of my rooms. I want you to go and pick it and bring it to me. Hazrat Fuzel ibn Ayaz went into the house of the Jew, into that room. And there, that bag that he was told to pick, he brought it and gave it to the Jew. The Jew opened the bag and there was gold in it. This bag first contained sand. First contained sand, but... Now it had gold in it. And the Jew said, I want to accept the religion that you bring. And Hazrat Fuzail ibn Ayaz was surprised and said, what is going on? What, what do you mean? And he says that when you said that God has aided you, Allah has, has aided you, has helped you to remove that pile of dirt. I had a suspicion that you must be a friend of Allah. I had a suspicion that you must be close to Almighty Allah. I wanted to test whether you were. And, and this is why I had read in our books, that the person who is a friend of Allah, one of his qualities is that person that is the, in the friendship of Almighty Allah. When he will pick a bag of sand, of dirt, he will be able to turn it into gold. His sincerity, his ikhlas will be so much that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put barakah into his touch. And when I told you to pick up that bag, that bag had dirt and had sand in it. And now look, it is gold. It means you must be a friend of Allah. And the religion that you follow is not the religion I follow. So it means now, since I have found the friend of Allah, I must also accept the religion of the friend of Allah. So he said, I want to say the Shahada. Please 
help me with saying the shahada. Hazrat Fuzail ibn Ayaz rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi helped him, assisted him, and on the hands of Hazrat Fuzail ibn Ayaz, this Jewish person became a Muslim. Hazrat Fuzail ibn Ayaz rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi was noted for his antisocial nature. He did not like to be associated, he did not like to be in the company of the people. In fact, he became so known, so respected in the society, that people used to gather around his house. And Hazrat Fuzail ibn Ayaz once went to the roof and saw that there are hundreds of people there that are trying to meet him, trying to sit in his company. And he addressed them and he said, O oh people, why are you here? Have you not got something better to do? Why are you here? This was his humbleness. This was also his antisocial behavior and nature. Because the awliya Allah, friends of Allah, some, of, some are there, are those that they love seclusion. And they like to not associate with the dunya, with ahl dunya with the people. Because they see the dunya as a calamity. They see the dunya as a challenge. They see the dunya as a trial, as a fitna. This is why they seclude themselves. But there are those on the other hand and that have reached a certain muqam that now they have reached that self-purification. They have purified themselves so much that even now if they go back and live among the dunya, among the people, the dunya can have no effect on them anymore. Now they have purified themselves so much that even though they live in the dunya, the dunya cannot harm them anymore. And this is also why Hazrat Fuzail ibn Ayyaz rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi later on in his life returned back and used to sit with the people and in the city of Mecca millions of people became his disciple or used to sit in his company in the suhbah of Hazrat Fuzail ibn Ayyaz once Amir al-Mu'mineen Harun Rashid came into the house of Hazrat Fuzail ibn Ayyaz and before he arrived he had sent his wazir ad advisor and asking, requesting Fuzail ibn Ayyaz to come to the palace. And Fuzail ibn Ayyaz said that, I have nothing to do in the palace. I have nothing that I want from you. So I am sorry, I apologize, but I cannot come to your palace because I do not have anything to do with the world, with the worldly affairs. And I want to stay away from the dunya. Khalifa Harun Rashid came into his house and once he met him and he shook hands, the first thing Fuzail ibn Ayyaz said, Oh Harun Rashid, you have such soft hands. It would be really, uh, it would be really a shame if these hands were being burnt in by the fire of hell. Khalifa Harun Rashid, when hearing this, suddenly got shocked, and his heart was filled with the fairness of Almighty Allah. They prayed Salatul Maghrib. Hazrat Fuzail ibn Ayyaz was asked to lead the prayer, but he did not. After persuading him. Only he did let the prayer. And Hazrat Fuzail ibn Ayaz was asked for nasiha, for advice by Amir al-Mu'mineen Harun Rashid. And the advice that he gave to him was, O oh Harun Rashid, O oh Amir al-Mu'mineen, consider every old person as your father. Consider every adult, every man as your brother. Consider every woman as your sister or your mother. And treat them the same way. Treat them similarly, treat them according to this. Then Harun Rashid said, O oh, Imam, O oh, Fuzail ibn Ayaz, Shaykh, after having spent in your, your sacred noble suhbah some moments, I now wish to present you a hadiyah. And he gave a bag that was filled with golden coins. He gave it to Hazrat Fuzail ibn Ayaz. And Hazrat Fuzail ibn Ayaz, when taking it, said, Oh, Harun Rashid, I am showing you the path to success, the path to salvation. I am showing you the, the path to Jannah. And you are showing me the path to dunya, to hellfire. You are showing me the path to destruction. I am showing you the path to Almighty Allah. And you want to detach me from Almighty Allah. You want to put my concentration to the dunya. And you return this money to Harun Rashid. This is a friend of Allah, my dear viewers. Unlike the so-called friends of Allah nowadays, the so-called mashayikh and the peers, that themselves demand from the muridin, some of them demand from the muridin that you have to pay us, you have to give us, and others do not demand. But when they are given, they keep taking it, they keep taking it. In fact, they think that it is their right, God-given right, that they, they must be 
given wealth and they must be given pres presents in the form of mon money, in the form of other ways. They think this is the God-given right. The true reality is that the friend of Allah, they do accept hidayah, they do accept from their loved ones. But when they accept this, the presence, the true friend of Allah is that he does not spend it on it himself. He then spends it on other murideen, on those that do have little, those that have not, those that are deprived, those that are in need. Hazrat Khwaja Nizamuddin awliya rahmatullahi ta'ala Thousands of people every day used to come to his darbar, used to come to his muqam, and they used to come to meet him. And there they used to give thousands of them, hundreds and thousands of, of uh, rupees, hundreds and thousands of dinar and dirham and money. And they used to give various different presents present to him. Hazrat Nizamuddin Awliya did accept them, yes. But at the same time, it was the same Nizamuddin Awliya that then ordered his murideen to spend that money on this langar, spend his money on feeding the poor. And every day, 10,000 people at least used to be able to eat in the morning, used to be able to eat in the, the afternoon, lunch, and to have dinner, to eat in the evening, in the, at the muqam, at the, at the darbar of Shaykh Nizamuddin Awliya Rahmatullahi Ta'ala It is the same Nizamuddin Awliya Rahmatullahi Ta'ala that accepts the presence and then organizes that a very rich meal is presented to people, rich and poor, in his darbar. The same Nizamuddin, when the ruler of Delhi comes to him and sits in his company, and he looks how the people are enjoying lavish and rich meals. He is shocked that I being the ruler, I'm able, un unable to feed thousands of people like this. And Nizamuddin Awliya is that man who every day feeds at least 30,000 people. He was surprised to see the same Nizamuddin Awliya, rahmatullahi, when the time of meal comes, he himself is eating bread with water. He himself is eating bread with water while he gets so much presence. This is what Fuzail ibn Ayaz rahmatullahi ta'ala This is, he was saying to Harun Rashid, Oh Harun Rashid, if I accept this and I do not spend it on others, it means that now this is the path to destruction. And Hazrat Fuzail ibn Ayaz, being a wali that wanted to detach himself from the dunya, used to even not accept these kind of presents. He was such a great wali that for many years he used to be a criminal used to be a sinful man in the eyes of Allah. Now he became one of the most beloved ones in the sight of Allah. Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, the great faqih, the great jurist, used to sit in the company of Hazrat Fuzail ibn Ayaz rahmatullahi ta'ala Once, Hazrat Fuzail ibn Ayaz rahmatullahi ta'ala sat in the company of Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi ta'ala He sat in the company of many other members of the Ahlul Bayt. And he attained barakat, he attained lessons of tasawwuf, lessons of adab from these great personalities. Hazrat Fuzail ibn Ayas rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi's life tells us, O oh dear viewers, when you see someone that has become religious, when you see someone that has become, has become now a religious person, now starts obeying Allah, starts worshipping Allah, but prior to that, you had seen him in such a state, a state of sin, while he was indulged in committing sin. Hazrat Fuzail ibn Ayaz and many awliya like him, their life tells us that, oh people, do not judge people, do not judge others based on their history. Because those that used to be or those that are now committing sin, one day they may become great friends of Almighty Allah. And those that are friends of Almighty Allah, their muqam is such that whatever they had done prior to becoming the friend of Allah, غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ زَنْبِهِ Allah Almighty has forgiven all of that. So who are you to judge? Who are you to tell them? Hazrat Fuzail ibn Ayaz rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi's life teaches us that you must not judge people. When we dislike people, we must not dislike them because they commit the sins, they are sinners. No, you must dislike sin only. But once we see the same people that were indulged in sin before, now they are not indulged in sin and their life is free from sin. Now we must love these people. You must honor these people. You must respect these people. Hazrat Fuzail ibn Ayas rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi did the tarbiyah of his child in such a way that his child used to love learning and used to love listening to the Holy Quran. There was a great Qari, 
a qari, a reciter of the Quran that used to recite very beautifully. Hazrat Fuzail ibn Ayas rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi employed him to recite Quran for his son and teach him. And Hazrat Fuzail ibn Ayas said to him, O qari, whatever you do, do not recite the, ver the surah, the chapter, surah al-qari'ah in front of my child because he is soft-hearted. He is such a person that when he hears about the punishments in the hereafter, particularly of Surah Al-Qari'ah, if he hears this, then he will not stop and he will to continue to cry and he will come out of his state and he will go into the state of fairness of Almighty Allah. So whatever you do, avoid reciting in front of him Surah Al-Qari'ah. Hazrat Fuzail ibn Iyya's son was the son that this particular Qari many months used to teach him and once without realizing without remembering, recited Surah Al-Qari'ah. When he recited Surah Al-Qari'ah, Hazrat Fuzail ibn Ayyah's son was, became in such a state of fairness of Almighty Allah, so scared that he screamed loudly in the fairness of Almighty Allah and at the same spot he passed away. Inna lillahi wa inna ilahi raji'un. This is the tarbiyah of Shaykh Fuzail ibn Ayyah's that he did not himself follow the path of tasawwuf. He made his son also one of those that follow the path of tasawwuf. Dear viewers, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq so to follow the path of the awliya Allah and to associate ourselves with the teachings and with the lives of these blessed ones. Until the next episode, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.